Tonight, three unbridled masters of the synthesizer will engage in a once-in-a-lifetime battle of Fingoric dexterity. This is Live at the Necropolis, the Lords of Synth. I'm Edgar Tangram, joined, of course, tonight by Zed Centauri. Tonight promises to be a rare musical treat and, dare I say, a high watermark for civilization. That's right, Edgar. These three synth legends have been known to score a film or two, but tonight they're about to score something unprecedented. A comet. Ailey's king of the comets. Especially bright in the sky tonight, it's closer to Earth than it's ever been before. Whoever scores the celestial dance of the comet most evocatively will be named the Lord of Synth. The losers will be banned from music for a period of 100 years. Much is at stake for our synth testants. Let's meet them now. God only goes by one name, and so does Zangelix, a reclusive genius who's appeared in public only never. There is only one hope for humanity. The synthesizer. Morgio Zaroger, a devil-may-care playboy who drinks a lot even for an Italian. Zangelix cannot touch me. He is a... Uh... <laughs> Zaroger's album, Zangelix is a Fool, has become an Italian disco staple, much to the chagrin of Zangelix himself. Carla Windows. Once known as Carlton Windows, this pioneer of gender nonconformity is obsessed with sonic trailblazing, perhaps too obsessed. For a brief time, Windows and Zaroger were lovers. But Carla's endless experimentation in her Mount Shasta octave spa proved too thick a wedge, and their harmony gave way to discord but all three must set their bygones aside to take the Necropolis stage tonight. They should be taking the stage any moment now. And with a stunning entrance from the back of the Necropolis steps, Zangelix has arrived. said all the combinations of all the names. As they process to their sensations, let's get a mood for the floor with our very own Ulf Hobie. Ulf. Cool. Ulf. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Zed. The crowd is in absolute awe of the Synth Legends 3. You can see Morgio Zeroger himself getting quite friendly with East German gold medalist Gervalt Auersperg. Carla Wendos getting her own cheer from the grandson of the original Zorro, Zorro III, of course, former President Gerald Ford, Captain Corelli and Captain Corelli's mandolin, a pulsating ball of pure energy. And look, Zangelix is bestowing a blessing on Panos, the wonder child. It's a magical scene here on the necropolis floor. Back to you in the booth. Thank you, Ulf. And they've now Finish the walk down the stairs. Gathering on the stage, preparing to score Haley's Comet. And a stunning first note. Zangelix's tones are syncing just beautifully with the comet. It's gonna be hard for the other synthsters to catch up. Quite the drone. Surprised to see him moving so dangerously in low end territory. Oh, he survived, but just barely. Sounds like Zeroger's off to an early lead, grooving on his Zorg, Polyprotos, and Clavitronulator. And Zeroger is matching each of the comet's flares with a musical flare all his own. Carl Windows wisely staying out of the fray using some pretty nifty patchwork to score this comet. With patchwork that stealthy, she may edge out the boys. Seems like the comet's looking a little larger and more bright and beautiful than last time we checked. Well, as we said, that 0.04 proximity makes the comet appear larger and brighter. Now let's back to the Lords. Zeroger has just taken some crystallized Eternal Plus, a powerful creative drug not yet available to the masses. And it appears to have taken effect. Take a look at how pink his ear blood is. Terrific. Just terrific. 
Don't look now, but Carla Windows has executed an absolutely killer tritone, which has given Zangelix a rather untimely boner. But he's striking back. I believe he's prepping an augmented 18th, which is a piercing atonal screech that only women can hear. <coughs> horrible, just horrible. Sonic agony for all females in attendance. Obviously, we here in the booth are fine, but the women at home would be well advised to cover their ears. Let's check in with the Comet Cam. Wow, it is alarmingly closer. Andrew, is it possible that the sonic dissonance from these senses somehow luring the comet toward us? Well, energy works in mysterious ways, Ed. It's not just the heat of the competition they're feeling down there, but rather the intense heat of Haley herself. We're certainly uh, feeling it here in the booth. <clears throat> this is Ulf on the floor. It seems President Ford has answered a call on the infamous red phone. He's being escorted away. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. This just then, I'm getting a official confirmation from the Reynolds Svetsky Observatory that Haley's Comet will be impacting Earth in roughly three minutes and 45 seconds. Let's go ahead and fade up the doomsday clock. And there goes the presidential pod, presumably carrying Gerald Ford to a secret arc. I can stop the destruction. I have the power. It's getting hotter and hotter. Very close. Must be about 100 degrees in here. Now, Windows is attempting to musically thwart this cosmic invader from the stars. You have failed to. Ah! You will die. Our last hope, then, is Angelix. Sadly, none of them had what it took to stop Haley's Comet, which, if you're just tuning in, is careening directly toward Earth. Sweet, merciful Jesus. Our greatest fear is confirmed. A Quick uh, note for the viewers, if you try to close your eyes, it doesn't quite work as the light is so bright. You see directly through your eyelids. You are drowning up my sins. I have the best sins. Oh! It's always about you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Panos the Wonder Child, an acute cosmosympath, is reeling in an epileptic fit. Here in the coal mine, it seems as if Earth is doomed, so we'll do our station sign off. Edgar, it's been a pleasure. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, Ulf, what's going down there on the floor? It appears the musicians are synth morse coding a plan to each other. Let's listen in. Yes, those notes clearly contain a plan. <laughs> happened here. I believe the Lords have unlocked a rejuvenatory octave, which has exploded the ball of pure energy in the crowd and united them all as one. This funky tune has resurrected Panos like the Christ. Seems as though the sheer coolness of the jam is Cutting the powerful heat emitting from Haley's Comet. Even I can't help but tap a toe to this one's head. I don't blame you. Ahem. This is quite a sight. It seems as though a Pegasus has been summoned. And even Captain Corelli is getting in on the magic. And here comes the knockout punch. And they've done it. Wow. Very nice. 
So to recap, the Sinsters have achieved harmony both musically and personally. As a result, Haley's Comet has been frozen in the sky as Earth's second moon. It appears existence is saved. That looks like former President Gerald Ford has returned, holding three golden medals he will bestow upon our synthesizers, crowning them all the Lords of Sin. Surely a stirring speech forthcoming from this great orator. Let's listen in. Today we are... Apologies to President Ford, but our allotted broadcast time is up. We have to wrap up in 20 seconds. It's a quick reminder that this public broadcasting station is paid for by viewers like you. So be sure to purchase the two VHS cassette of this recording, Live at the Necropolis, Lords of Synth, Humanity Saved, for $47.